welcome to Numerics Video Blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Joining me today, Senior Vice President of the Client Solutions Group here at Numerics, Satyam Kinshala. Satyam, welcome. Hi, Jim. We want to talk about um, the publish, recent publishing of, in December of 2013, the ISDA document in terms of standard initial margin model for non-clear derivatives. And this was really kind of a follow-up to uh, a, a BS, uh, BS and IOSCO paper that came out in September 2nd, really around the margin requirements from uh, for non-centrally cleared derivatives. And as part of that directive, um, is to published a nine criteria guideline, but also has some challenges based in here as well. well can you give us a, a quick little overview of some of the criteria and what this document is, uh, is meant to accomplish at this point? So, well, as you know, the Basel Committee and IOSCO came up with this uh, regulation for bilateral margin or the mandated margin as a methodology for um, handling and, and reducing counterparty risk for bilateral trades as well. We know that for all clear trades, margin is already uh, in place and all the CCPs are, are implementing the margin models and banks are implementing margin models, etc. But what the BCPS paper has cleared is the requirement for margin in the case of bilateral models as well, in the case of bilateral trading as well. And as a result, um, as we all know, these trades are quite complex and there's a lot of variability in terms of how they are priced. And on top of that, if you add the variability that comes into the picture because of the margin model itself, uh, and there are so many different options around how the margin model can be built, uh, it could lead to a lot more confusion in the market. It could lead to uh, disputes around the pricing and margin calculations, and it could further uh, make the uh, OTC market structure further complicated and difficult for participants, which is why uh, ISDA has come up with this uh, principles paper around uh, creating a standard margin model, and uh, they've identified some criteria of what this this kind of standard model might be. Now, one of the, the, the key things, and, and the margin uh, calculation requirements by the central clearers is, is proprietary to them, but this mimics uh, some of the standard requirements that market participants are facing when uh, facing off against the clearinghouse. Is that correct? Absolutely. There is a, definitely a flavor uh, to this whole margin model which is, uh, which is aligned with and similar to uh, what we have seen in, in, at CCPs and also prior to CCP uh, clearing for swaps, uh, even for the uh, span model around futures and so on. So the goal of this model is to, is to keep the calculations more or less in an al alignment. Uh, so that uh, we can have apples to apples comparison, we can have some, some kind of a standard. Uh, but of course, this would apply bilat to bilateral trades, whereas the CCP models would apply to centrally cleared trades. So one of the, the, the questions I have, though, is the document really also highlights a lot of the challenges um, there are in achieving uh, this, this standardized initial margin model. <laughs> and you know, one of the things in terms of when I look at it is the key word is standard. Right, mm -hmm. so yes, we have standardization as it relates to interest rate swaps, and we have standardization mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. the stack convention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are going to be some of the challenges as other instruments are driving yeah. under this umbrella or quotes of standardization? Exactly. I think I think w w what you'll see in the in the paper itself, and also the studies that have been done, is that there is so much <coughs> possibility of variation that the impact of this margin uh, process could be somewhere between half a trillion to eight trillion euros. So that just tells you how much uh, the variability can be just, just at a macro level in terms of the margin calculations. Now, why, why is this variability uh, uh, taking place and why, why is uh, this variability in the, in the model? Uh, and that, that's because, first of all, we must realize that these are, these are the uh, hard to clear or the unclearable traits. So whereas in the CCP world, we're still talking about standard swaps and swaptions and instruments like that, here we're talking about multi-asset derivatives, cross-asset hybrid derivatives, equities, commodities, etc. cetera. Uh, so the product complexity is one. Uh, the risk factor complexity is another. And then the VAR model versus expected shortfall, uh, having the exact uh, definitions for risk factor offsets, uh, using Greeks or not using Greeks. So there are a number of possibilities in terms of how this margin model can be implemented, and that's where there's a lot of variability, and uh, ISDA is, is, is rightly looking to, to make sure that we, we, we streamline that and have some kind of an industry standard. So clearly, uh, ISDA, we're following uh, where the central clearers are in terms of a similar model. Um, 
uh, but for bilateral trades. How does this play into the uh, adaptation of the standard CSA? If we're thinking on the opposite side of the trade in terms mm -hmm. of variation margin, how are the two interacting together? Oh, definitely. I think that having a standard CSA really helps to streamline some of these calculations because obviously the margin is, is supposed to provide a, a cover for um, any kind of systemic shock or, or counterparty shock. And uh, having clear definitions around CSAs and standard uh, definitions around CSAs uh, reduces complexity around, around optionality in the CSA. And that will help to, uh, to remove some of the complexity. Uh, of course, there's a lot, lot of variability in the margin model beyond uh, what goes into a CSA. Uh, but having a standard CSA will definitely help uh, to, to reduce the complexity. Okay, well, Satyam, I, I, we're definitely going to talk about this a little bit more, and, and I do want to jump down into uh, different elements of the criteria. There's a lot to discuss, but we'll save that for the next video blog. So we want to talk about the things you want to hear about. Um, so please, again, follow us on Twitter, at NX Analytics, or on our blog, and, and let us know. So we're covering all the elements. I'm going to ask you back into this chair one more time, and we'll break down into the, the nine elements of criteria. And uh, with that, I'd like to wish everyone a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Jim.